declared, you go girl. Poppy's dreams had come true. I'm Cindy Merrim, Editor-in-Chief of Diggin' Magazine, and I'm here today with Olympic gold medalist Christy mm -hmm. Yamaguchi. Hi Christy, Hi how there. are you today? Good, how are you? Great, thank mm -hmm. you. And Christy um, is here today representing her charity organization, Always Dream Foundation. And today was a very special day. She surprised 70 Oakland school children with a book reading and two tickets to Disney on Ice, presenting Dare to Dream. Now, Christy, I just have a few questions for you. Um, in 1996, you started Always Dream Foundation. What was it that inspired you to start this organization? Well, I was really inspired, actually, by the Make-A-Wish Foundation and the work they did with children and their families. And um, I got to work really closely with uh, that organization for several years while I toured. And um, that inspired me to start Always Dream and to dedicate, um, you know, my time and energy to kind of be a positive impact on the lives of children. Um, so it's exciting. The last couple of years we've refocused onto early childhood literacy and, um, you know, it's just, it's great to be here with Disney to kind of celebrate uh, literacy and uh, dreaming, really. That's wonderful. <laughs> and um, how did you team up with Disney on Ice? Well, I think it's kind of a natural fit. They're in town for uh, their new show, Dare to Dream, which features uh, the three princesses. And um, my foundation is called the Always Dream Foundation. So it was great to be able to team up and, you know, give a special um, experience for some of the local school children here uh, to not only see the show, but to uh, meet Princess Tiana and to uh, hear a book reading as well as receive a book that they get to take home and share with their families. Great, and um, on a personal level, thinking back to your early childhood, who was it in your life that instilled um, the importance of reading and learning? I think I was lucky that my parents uh, really helped instill that. I mean, I remember having our favorite books and them reading them to us at home and, uh, you know, over and over and over uh, again, the same books. Um, but, you know, I think, you know, also at school, just learning, you know, at, at preschool and then at, at kindergarten, um, being exposed to that. So, um, you know, certain teachers too, I remember sitting down and having reading time and really, really enjoying that. So. Um, so yeah, hopefully we can pass that on to the, this new generation. Great. And your program, um, Always Reading, provides e-readers for students, teachers, and parents, um, giving them access to e-books and educational games. How do you feel that um, incorporating these new technologies can really aid um, in the academic success of children? Well, I think, you know, you kind of have to move at the times of technology and that's kind of uh, the wave of where things are going, especially in the future. And I think once, once these kids are, you know, older, they will be um, probably doing a lot more schoolwork on tablets. So to give them the exposure now, I think, is really important, especially in the underserved communities where perhaps they don't have tablets at home. And, you know, these kids will be able to see the difference of a hardcover book as well as an e-book. Um, on a tablet and to learn, you know, how to navigate uh, through the different, um, you know, applications and everything on a tablet. So, um, so I don't know, it's really exciting and it's kind of uncharted territory, but we're thrilled to kind of pioneer this. Great, sounds like a great program. Well, I wish you and the Always Dream Foundation the best of luck in championing the cause of early childhood literacy. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much. Nice to talk to you. You too.